All right, guys, so I'm filming out here. It's getting, it's going basically from dusk to dark. So I got to slowly crank up my ISO. And I'm also working on a couple of little tips that I, I learned from Brandon Lee. One of the tips that he talked about was basically shooting to a photo. So you got photo A and you got photo B, where you want to start your shot and where you want to finish your shot and then do the movement in between. I thought that was a great tip. So I've been out here actually trying it. It makes it, it makes it, my shots a little bit more interesting or more of a story than just kind of randomly searching around. So I look for what I would take a photo of on my first shot and then what my second photo would be. And then I just do a move, I'll ease into the move and then ease out into the move. So that's what I'm working on. All right guys, so tonight I'm using the AY Gamut with this Cineon log profile. I normally don't use the Cineon log profile, so we'll see what kind of grade we can push out of it tonight on that, so. I also am using the Moondog's Anamorphic tonight. Moondog is just my favorite anamorphic lens. It doesn't flare too hard, but it just looks so cinematic. I'm using my Usky Vision light, which works out nice, so I can do shots like this and it's completely dark around me, so it works out good. I got the link down in the description if you guys are interested in that. It's a kit that comes with the, the actual tripod that I'm using. It's a flexi arm tripod, which I'm using at the moment. I'm using, the, I'm using their whole setup. Uh, the only thing I'm not using is the microphone. And uh, of course, I got my anamorphic lens on here. Also, the music you guys are listening to is from Audio. Right now, they're running a deal. You can get 70% off your subscription with my link down in the bio. Take a look at that, guys. Again, I preach it so much. Copyright free music is the way to go. You don't have to worry about copyright strikes in the future or anything like that. So take a look, 70% off, links down in the description. All right, for those of you who stayed around to the end here, I got a little treat for you. I'm gonna quickly show you how I graded this. Again, this was a new process because I was using the Cineon log, uh, log profile. So it was a little, I tried something different here. Again, I was watching my boy Kazi and he had a cool little uh, video that I checked out and I wanna try this technique on here. And it's a lot more contrasty than normally that I get out of my footage. Normally my footage always tends to be a little bit uh, on the, the less contrastier side. But this way I've noticed it was a lot more contrastier. So let me quickly show you what I did here. We went in and I added three nodes here, Alt S, S. All right. In the middle one here, what I do is I add in, um, Again, why is my effect window not popping up? I don't know if this thing is glitching out, but this happened to me last night. So there it is. See, it works and when I'm in dual mode, I understand that. But anyways, uh, color transform, uh, color space transform. I'm gonna take that, dump that on the middle, right? And these are the settings that I kind of used in this case, because I did use, again, A gamut in DaVinci Resolve with a Cineon log profile. A gamut is basically the Alexa version of the gamut here inside of MC Pro. So I'm gonna just go ahead and select ARIA Alexa, input gamut. I'm going to also select ARIA Log C, even though I use something different, but we'll see what. And then color space output, I wanna set that to Rec 709, because that's gonna be my final output, Rec 709. And then output gamma, I'm going to switch to Cineon Log, oh, sorry, Cineon Log format right here, Cineon Log Film, okay? So, that was it. so this gives me this kind of flat image here. So then what I normally do, I don't normally do, but in this case, I wanted to have that little bit of filmic look. So I took one of the DaVinci Resolve film profiles. Um, let me go back here and 
bring this back to a single screen for you so you guys can see this one I'm going to use. I went to LUTs, I went to DaVinci Resolve, I went to Film LUTs or Film Looks. This comes stock with DaVinci Resolve. And then I chose Rec 709 Kodak 2383D60. I chose that one, boom. Now that kind of gives me uh, that filmic correction, right? And the, the profile that I'm using. So we got this image here. And right off the back, you can see there's a lot of cyan or a crayon in there, like that, that blue aqua co color. So what I immediately do, something again, I, I, this is all the technique I learned from Mikazi. So check out his YouTube page if you guys are interested. Um, I went to filter lights. I went to printer light highlights. I went to full lights. And then these are the colors here. And you can see here we have crayon, which I'm gonna use on my notepad, my number pad, I'm gonna to use to minus. So crayon is minus on the number pad. And I do wanna minus the crayon because we can clearly see that there's too much crayon. And so I'm gonna go ahead and minus once, twice, maybe three times. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of red because red's on the opposite side of crayon, right? And I'm looking at like that there. Then I'm gonna quickly grab my white dabber and just kind of white balance this here. Boom, that should be white. Okay, now there's a little too much red. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit number four to minus that red, right? Okay, so that's kind of looking what I'm looking at here. Let's see if I can uh, vector scope. Again, I'm, there we go. Okay, you can still see there's a little bit of crayon in that, that aqua blue again. So maybe one more minus. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there, that looks good. Now, let's kind of scroll through here and then see what's looking there. This is looking close to what I, I shot in real life, even though to me it still looks a little bit bluey, but again, that film LUT, that film uh, LUT that we put on also has a little bit of that blue in there, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that where it's at. Then I went into my curves. Normally I always use my gain and, and gamma and stuff, but this time he used the curve, so I tried it out too, and again, what I'm gonna do here, just add a point here. I'm gonna add a point here in the middle. And then I'm gonna add another point here. So you can see what's happening, right? This is kind of like my lows a little bit. I'm gonna go there and then I'm gonna actually bring this back down a little bit and bring this down. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that up and then I'm just gonna put some in between here to kind of, to fill this out. And then let's even put one here I want it to be too contrasty. Maybe something like that. I don't even put one in here, just kind of split the difference there. See, we're making subtle, minute differences here. This guy, let's just bring him up a little bit. No, I think I like where I had it. Okay, so quickly, oh, you know what? I made a mistake. I actually made a mistake. Let me reset that. And that white balance, let me reset that. After you add the LUT onto this one, we need to go back to the beginning before the color transfer and do it here. I made a mistake. That, that, that was exactly what he said. Most of the rookies do this. They will basically put on the color transform, drop the LUT on and start grading. He said, go before the color transfer and before the LUT and start grading. So now I'm gonna go to the first LUT here, the first node and turn it back on, control D. And now here we'll go ahead and start doing that again, which I was doing. And, and the reason why he does that is because you don't lose, like, look at the, look how much more room I get to move before it really gets blown out, right? It's a big difference, right? It's, it's, it's a big difference. So I'm gonna go and I wanna get that little bit more dark contrast look that we had going before. Pull some of these guys down here and do that one. Um, again, I normally don't go high contrasty look, but in this case, I'm, I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone. So again, we got to correct those colors. Uh, so make sure I'm on that node, right? We need to remove some of that. Let me go ahead and white balance it first really quickly. White balance, this should be white. Right, now there's a little bit of too much red. I'm gonna hit minus four. And then next, I'm gonna hit minus because there's still that crayon is in there a little bit. I don't like that. And one more minus there. This back wall is, is, is like a cream color, so it is not true white, but my desk is supposed to be white. So I'm gonna minus one of those reds out again. And opposite on red, 
let's bring up what's the opposite of red which would be kind of that pink magenta and let me see where that was at magenta would be two notepad two and zero so two to add i'm going to add in two just one hit of that magenta there we go eh. actually one and two let me actually oh no 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 undo that yeah that was uh i don't like that i like what i had before again magenta zero pad was to minus zero pad was to minus and now we brought the huckle back in there we go one more okay it's a constant battle yin yang you're constantly battling with this the, to get your colors the way you want it and then i'm going to bring this back down a little bit i like that that contrasting look okay so that's looking cool right there that's looking cool and then what i'm going to do here i'm going to go down to my saturation bump that up to 80 and boom I'm going to leave that as is, as it is. There it is. And again, that we got that, that film emulation LUT on here. So the colors are not are exactly like, because of that, that LUT, let me turn that off. So control D, right? There's without that. And let's go back to where we were. Let's undo everything. So we were originally here. We added the color transform on. Then we added the LUT, the film LUT. Turn that on, right? And then we added on, then we did our, our grading and our adjustment using the curves this time. And there it is. I, I'm really happy with the way that looks. That looks really nice. Now I did another clip here before this one here. And let me go back to that one really quickly. Where was that? That one was this one. And I totally got the whites to match a lot more better. This was more natural to my the, what I was seeing. Plus I like the way this looks. So I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna grab steel. And then I'm gonna go back to the one I just did. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to LUTs. And we're not seeing it, so that means we probably need to close a window. Let's gallery. How come? There he goes. Let's and let's go back to gallery. And I'm gonna save this one. And I want to paste this one on there. All right. So let me go back to nodes clips. All right. So good. Now we took that first one that I did and pasted it onto this one. So they 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 both match. And then I got one more clip that I did, which is this one. And again, I'm gonna go back to gallery. I want to take this mouse middle button, push over the top. This one, now this one looks, it looks okay, but it's a little bit dark here in the shadows for me. Those didn't seem to be that dark in the shadows. Ah, oh, they are. Oh. There it is, there it is. It's just with this being all black like that. I just, you know what, I want to fix that. It's just a little bit dark. So what I'm actually going to do, Alt-Z, and just go to my log wheel and I'm just gonna lift up the shadows just a little bit right there that's all I'm gonna do cool so full screen that boom that's what we got there I was using the anamorphic lens here so of course the focus is not going to be tack sharp because we're using the anamorphic lens and boom that's it so if you guys stay to the end what's the key we're going to be again let's do I love anamorphic so I know that you guys stay to the end thanks guys for the support Again, take a look. I got audio 70% off. Grab that discount. That is a fantastic discount. And then also, don't forget, I got the mobile filmmaking or mobile photography guide it is out. And a lot of people don't know about it. People were like, I didn't know you had a guide. Yeah, I do have a mobile photography guide. And I am still working on the mobile filmmaking guide, which is I actually uploaded my first video to the site. So it's almost there, guys. Stay with me. Check out the email if you guys are not, uh, so you can stay in tune because I'm going to start posting it out on the email crew before I announce it here. Patrick LeVar, keep filming. It's the only way you'll get better. Peace.